Can you remember how to convert between miles per hour and meters per second? Well, in the first question, we're going to convert from 70 miles per hour to meters per second, and we've been given the information down here that one mile is 1,609 meters. So the first thing I'm going to think about is if we have 70 miles per hour, we're going to multiply the miles by 1609 to get the meters per hour, and then we're going to divide by the number of seconds in one hour, which is 60 multiplied by 60. And when we do that, we get an answer equal to 31.28. So to two significant figures, that's closer to 31. So that's 31 meters per second. For the next question, we're going to be converting between kilowatt hours and joules. And one kilowatt hour is going to be the same as 1,000 watts times 3,600 seconds, which is 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. So if we've got 14.6, we're going to multiply that by this number up here, 3.6 times 10 to the 6, to get the total energy in joules, which equals 5256000, which is equal to 5.26 times 10 to the 7 joules. Okay, so a very large number of joules in just 14.6 kilowatt hours. And finally, we're going to go from electron volts to joules to kilowatt hours. So uh, we're going to be going from tera electron volts. We're going to convert that into joules. And then we're going to convert that again into kilowatt hours. So if we've got 3.5, that's 3.5 times 10 to the 12 electron volts. We're going to multiply that by 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 to convert this whole answer into joules. But as we go from joules to kilowatt hours, we're then going to divide by 3.6 times 10 to the 6 as we go from joules to kilowatt hours. And if we put that into the calculator, we get an incredibly small number, 1.555. So that's going to be to two significant figures like our raw data, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 kilowatt hours. So there we go, just some simple unit conversion. Uh, the one for miles per hour, just be aware they will always give you the conversion factor for the number of meters in a mile. The other ones are things that you're expected to know about and you'll develop those skills as you go through the A-level physics course. By the way, this is just one of many videos I've made covering all of the maths that you need to understand for A-level physics. It's part of a mini course, which includes many more topic videos, multiple worked examples, and also a guide that you can download. You can find all of this over at alevelphysicsonline.com.